Okay, so um, this project we've set up here is again using the um, the blade antenna. Um, so the first step is just your definition. You um, import your your FECO model. Um, when you hit the import variables button, it generates this list. So these four variables are parametric geometric variables in FECO. And here you can define the, the range that you'd like to use. So these variables have just been normalized so that their nominal value is one. So we're looking at about a, a design space of a 30% swing on each of the variables. Then um, this model was set up uh, before the PostVeco uh, integration was available. So we used the, the Lua script functionality. Um, so I have a, a script that is run in the background. And this basically um, writes uh, or creates this output file that is read by um, Hyperstudy, which contains literally these um, four different variables. So those are var values that are calculated by the script and written to these variables. And that is the, the real impedance, the imaginary impedance, S11 and um, bandwidth. And all three of those first parameters are at the center frequency. The bandwidth is the 10 dB bandwidth. So yeah, that's everything for the setup. The next step here um, is to um, basically configure the DOE. And uh, this is also really straightforward. Um, there's only really one parameter that you need to choose. So firstly, there are uh, many different um, methods that you can apply for space filling in the hyperstudy. But we would um, always or strongly recommend the use of MELs um, for two reasons. Namely, it's very efficient for space filling operation, but it also has the property that it can be um, extended where you might need that is um, once you've created your fit surface response, you can see how accurate that is. And you may need to add additional um, simulation points. And in that case, you don't need to recompute the first data set. You can just add a new data set to extend that. So yeah, literally the, the only value, value that you need to set here is decide how many uh, runs to run. And it's a little bit complicated depending on um, you know, the complexity and the behavior of the antenna in the design space. Um, and also obviously the number of variables. So in this case, we ran 250. After you've run the simulations, um, you get um, a table. So you can see these are the geometric variations. And these are the results of all those parameters. Now already at this step, um, HyperStudy has some very nice tools for kind of investigating the design. Uh, one of these is the Pareto plot. So I'm looking at my four output responses. And as a function, we're sort of plotting the geometric dependence on those variables. So if we just glance at these four plots, what you might notice is that um, in most cases, the um, W3, I think that's one of the widths for the blade, underscore SF, is actually the, the smallest uh, influence on the design, except in this case, where it's a little bit bigger, but all the values are actually quite small here and dominated by this variable. So in this case, it might be possible to um, reduce the dimensionality of this design space to only use these three um, variables. So that's one um, really nice parameter. Another thing you can do here um, is look at um, the behavior. I think I've already set some up here where you have um, that kind of snake pots. And you can yeah, really play around um, to get a feeling how um, the responses interact with um, the geometric variables. 
So that's the first DOE. I have also run a second DOE, which is um, just a validation DOE. You don't need to do this step, but I just wanted to demonstrate it nonetheless. Um, here we use a different method just to generate statistically independent data, and we use many less uh, number of samples here. And I'll show you in a moment where that comes out. Then we generate our surface response. And this is also a matter of a few mouse clicks. We firstly need to point or add our DOE matrices. Um, the main being our input DOE, which is the main computation. And here you can see the validation matrix, which I'm using for testing purposes. Then in the definition, um, I think it's in the specifications, um, so again, HyperStudy has a whole range of options how you can go about computing the um, surface response. But um, in a relatively new uh, release, they included what's called the fast um, surface response. And basically what that does is it goes through all the different methods that are available and chooses the optimum or the best fitting um, surface response to the data. So it's basically fully automated. There are some options that you can, can configure, but to date I've never used any of those. So the recommendation is use fast, you press apply, you press next, and it computes for you. And yeah, so let's have a look what, what we get from that. So firstly, um, you have kind of an integrity. This is just sort of a high level um, summary. It gives you some sort of range parameters. Um, I think most interesting starts with the um, diagnostic, which is where you can get a sense of the accuracy. So here you can see the, the four different output parameters and our R squared um, parameter gives us an indication of uh, accuracy, where ideally we would like that to be one. So as close to one as possible, the more the accuracy. So in other words, this, all these parameters have been fitted really nicely or very accurately. And here in the detailed view, you can also see where that testing matrix pops out. So Hub study does do some cross-validation using the, um, the first or main DOE, um, but this is just a sort of additional step that you can use if you want. The last thing here you can just see is the um, the type of uh, fit surface that was used. So radial basis function for the first three and MLSM for the, the bandwidth. Um, here you're already fairly confident that we have a good accuracy, but you can also look on the residuals. So here we're looking at S11. On the left column, we have our um, the actual simulated values. On the right, we have um, the values at the same. I'm just going to add the geometric variables here to make it a bit more clear. So at this instance of the geometry, we have the computed value by FECO and the value obtained from the, the surface at that point. And here you can see then um, the error so a very small error also expressed as a percentage. And we can really look um, down the whole list there um, and see as we expect that um, a very small error is occurred here. Then two last thoughts here, um, starting with um, the scatter. Um, let's do this on the, uh, the surface rather, uh, instead of the actual data. So what we're looking at, um, and this really highlights the need for trade-off analysis, um, the computed S11 and our bandwidth on, um, on the lower axis. So a classic optimization scenario might be um, you want to maximize your uh, bandwidth, but you want to minimize your S11 at the center frequency. So you see that is sort of a, a conflicting requirement somehow because as your bandwidth increases here, the trend is that your S11 also goes up. 
So this is sort of a, a classic multi-goal optimization problem. How do you go about setting up your goals? How do you weight your goals to get the optimum that you're looking for? And we'll get into that in a little bit more detail in a moment. But just to show you one more feature here is the trade-off analysis that you can do manually at this point. So um, we have slider bars um, at our disposal here for the geometric variables. And as I'm changing those, you may have noticed that the, um, the output responses are updating. So we can pretty easily play around um, to get a feeling how um, my geometric variables interact with my output responses. And the reason why this is so quick um, is because those values are simply being read from my surface response. And that is really now the value of this workflow is that we have a continuous behavior, um, so we don't need to rerun simulations each time. We can just go and um, get the value from the surface for each of those responses. So in that regard now, if we start looking at optimization, we can run these really fast optimizations and it gives us the flexibility when we are doing things like trade-off analysis to play around with my goal weighting and things like that. So what I've done um, is set up three different optimization problems. Um, let's start off looking at the, um, the goal of each of those optimizations. So again, you can see my responses. You'll notice that uh, there's this field evaluate from, and I've chosen to evaluate that from the fit surface response. So it means that instead of computing each iteration, it's just going to get those from the surface response. And in this case, we're just minimizing S11. Um, the second optimization is uh, more of a, a trade-off. So I'm going to limit S11 to be below 0 0.3, but I'm going to maximize my bandwidth. And then just for a novel uh, idea for the third case, I have decided to, let's say, change the characteristic impedance of this antenna. So instead of using a 50 ohm real part, I've gone and looked for a 75 ohm real part. So just to give you an indication how fast this really is, um, you'll see here um, there are going to be 50 iterations performed. I'm just going to press apply to reset that. I'm going to press next and evaluate, and you'll see this is really a matter of seconds. And we have found an optimum down here. And again, the reason why this has been so fast is instead of computing all of those, um, it's just gone and got those values from the surface. And the last step, what you can do, um, you can select a row or just one of those values and press verify. And what that'll do is it'll create a, a single instance where that FECO model is prepared with that geometry. You can rerun those and then compute the actual um, responses. Um, and I've done that already, just to show you quickly how that looks. So here you can see the three different designs. Um, we're looking at S11, starting off with um, our min S11, the way we minimized our, our S11 at the center frequency. Then uh, the second curve or the green curve is where um, we uh, reduced S11, I think below 0 0.3, but also um, tried to maximize the bandwidth. And you'll see we have probably about 20 or 25 percent more bandwidth for this case. And the last case is then where um, we retuned the characteristic impedance to 75 or the real part of the impedance to 75 ohm. What's interesting here. Um, is if I just change the um, characteristic impedance to 75, you can see, so the optimization is done at 300 megahertz there. Um, but incidentally, we have actually a really nice bandwidth of this uh, behavior as well. 
And obviously we can look at the impedance plots for that last case as well. Um, so we optimize for 75 ohm and more by chance, it just happens that the um, imaginary part is um, pretty close to zero there too. And that's why we have a really nice deep S11 there. 